Good evening. Councillors in Southampton have voted to increase council tax by nearly 5%, with more than half of that being used to fund social care. But it still means the city has to find £40 million of budget reductions over the next three years. Protests were held today against the cuts. The disabled say they're being unfairly hit. Christine Alsford has our report. No cuts! No While councillors gathered no inside, to discuss budget reductions and revenue expenditure, those on the steps outside said they were just calling for compassion. Councils are making a choice to pass cuts on to disabled people. Protesters, including many using wheelchairs, gathered at Southampton's Civic Centre to oppose proposed budget cuts totalling £40 million. They say they're angry at the changes and feel the disabled are being unfairly hard hit. Among them, 84-year-old Barbara Lupton. I'm here because there's more government cuts on the way, especially for the disabled. They seem to like to hurt the people that have least. Oh, very worrying. I mean, everything's close to breaking point. Any disability cuts have got to be stopped. I mean, there's not enough money spent on disability. The council say that they've had to cut budgets for the last six years, totalling some £120 million. They say in the future they can no longer continue to make economies without taking some very painful decisions. It's not that we're targeting the most vulnerable, but the vast majority of our budget is spent on the most vulnerable. And when you're looking to make reductions, particularly having done £120 million of cuts already, some of the things that will be changed or removed or altered will affect you know, the most vulnerable members of society, and that is a regret to me. Among the other measures now on the cards in the city, introducing fortnightly instead of weekly bin collections, increasing charges in outlying district car parks, saving money on a short break service for children with disabilities and no longer funding an outreach project for people with HIV. But opposition councillors say those in power in the local authority are going about things the wrong way. I think the current Labour Council have got their priorities all wrong. What they should be doing is investing a lot more in making this city an attractive place for people to come and work and study and live here because that will grow the economy and will give us more tax revenues to pay for vital services. The council say many of the changes will be achieved by altering the way things are done for the better and improving efficiency. But those who increasingly feel left out in the cold say they think the worst is yet to come. Christine Olsford, ITV News. Police investigating a shooting in Waterlooville on Monday have been granted extra time to question a woman. The 31-year-old was arrested on suspicion of conspiring to murder after a man was shot in the head on Athena Avenue. Two others were bailed yesterday after being arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. Members of the RMT are to strike for 24 hours next week after talks with Southern Rail broke down yesterday. The dispute centres on the company wanting drivers to operate train doors at stations. The strike will run for 24 hours on Wednesday, February the 22nd. A camera in a doorbell has captured this man breaking into a home in Seaford in Sussex. It was filmed on Sunday night. An internet router was stolen from the porch, but the man didn't enter the house. Police want anyone who recognises him to contact them. A man who conned thousands of pounds out of women he met on dating sites and hospitals has been jailed for four years. David Coombs from Southampton gained the women's trust through deception, then claimed he needed to borrow money to pay for living expenses. Carrie Swain was in court. Carol Ann Board and her four children ended up homeless after conman David Coombs tricked her out of a £500 deposit for a new house, disappointed at his four-year prison sentence. The thing is with this man, he will come out and he will do it again. He will find other victims because that's the kind of man he is. Um, he has no ethics whatsoever. He has no empathy. He doesn't care about anybody else. 52-year-old David Coombs conned a vulnerable woman patient in a psychiatric unit out of £7,500. He wheeled a woman who just had her leg amputated to a hospital cash machine to withdraw money for him. His own brother was at Southampton Crown Court to see him sentenced. He says he even stole £12,000 from their own mother. He's a horrible man. What he got today should have been more. It's, it's just hurt so many people. I'm even upset now talking about it. He should have got a lot, lot more. 
David Coombe's Facebook page claims he treats people with respect, but he has 22 previous convictions for 62 offences dating back 35 years. His victims, often women, he was able to charm and then ruthlessly take advantage of. The judge described David Coombs as a con man of many years' experience. His level of dishonesty was truly staggering. He picked on obviously vulnerable people, systematically and ruthlessly taking advantage of his victims' good nature. He would say things like, oh, I've lost my wallet, or I've left my wallet somewhere, or I've got problems paying, or could you please pick this up, I'll pay you back. All things that were completely contradictory to the kind of lavish lifestyle that he was trying to portray. And he kept asking us for money, for deposit, and the keys were coming. He just seemed very convincing. He just seemed a really decent, kind man. David Coombs pleaded guilty to nine counts involving a total of £37,000, a catalogue of lies, deceit and threats, according to the judge. Kerry Swain, ITV News. A number of post boxes have disappeared from a rural village in Dorset. Thieves pulled up or cut down the boxes at Wimborne St Giles. One of them was 80 years old. The villagers believe they'll be sold on the black market as novelty items. With more now, here's Martin Douse. Wimborne St Giles, picturesque, quiet, always fighting to keep its sense of village identity, keen to keep the bonds that bind the community intact. And the people living here, like many other rural communities, feel that the very fabric of their village is being chipped away bit by bit. And the latest thing that they're losing are these, into the hands of thieves. One of their post boxes used to be attached to this telegraph pole, but it vanished overnight. It was pre-war from the reign of George VI, recently repainted with a distinctive curved top think how many people have posted their letters off to people, loved ones in the war, different things like that, Christmas cards, birthday cards. Overnight it's been just taken off, probably, you know, 10 minutes if you could call it work, I wouldn't call it work. And some of the, the people here in, in the um, hamlet are elderly, they can't get down to the post office. So it was their lifeline and it's, it's been taken from us and we feel violated to be honest with you. Shavings of red paint mark the spot where another local box was dragged out of the ground, probably by a vehicle. What irks the villagers is that the boxes are probably being stolen to feed a black market demand for them as novelty items. But to them, they're a vital rural amenity. If we don't get them back, it's even a bigger shame. You know, it, it is, it's disgusting. The Royal Mail doesn't sell its old boxes on ever, so it urges people to be highly suspicious of any they see or are offered for sale. A spokesman said, We can confirm that two post boxes have been stolen recently in the Wimborne St Giles area. We apologise to customers for any inconvenience this may cause. We urge anyone with information about this or any other post box theft to contact the police. Word around here is that dozens of others have disappeared in similar circumstances in the wider area in the last couple of years. Marty Dow, ITV News. Today has seen the launch of the Brighton Festival 2017 and its famous Fringe. It's now 50 years old and has seen famous names like Laurence Olivier and violinist Jehudi Menuhin. It's just as famous for its children's parade and welcoming approach. And for a preview of what's coming up and who this year's famous guest director is, just head to our website itv.com forward slash Meridian. Let's take a look at the weather now with all the details tonight. It's Simon. From sleet to the slopes, driving through Europe, Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Good evening. Well, you'll be pleased to know it's a very quiet and calm night tonight, but there is a downside. Tomorrow morning might not be this pretty because there will be some mist and murk to deal with. Once that lifts, though, a fairly decent Thursday on the cards with some good spells of sunshine and just an odd rogue shower here and there. The general plan over the next few days is looking good as well with settled weather thanks to high pressure. And we've got the jet stream sitting way to the north of us and that allows the mild air to keep on coming. So as we head through into next week, temperatures will be 
be around or a little above average for the time of year. Certainly not a cold night tonight. Again, an odd spit or spot of rain possible, but for the most part we're dry. Some clear spells and some mist and fog patches too. Temperatures down to around 5, 6 degrees. So frost free tomorrow morning, even if there is a bit of murkiness to wake up to. But that mist and fog will soon lift. And then the day is looking quite nice. There'll be some cloud around. There'll also be some decent spells of sunshine and the winds will stay light too. So temperatures tomorrow peaking at around 11 Celsius, 52 in Fahrenheit. Should feel even nicer with just light winds. And then it's more of the same with another murky start on Friday morning. Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. And that is it for now. We're back during Good Morning Britain from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Join Amanda for that. From the late team, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.